As Meshibbeth said to David, he said, why should you pay regard to me, a dead dog? And that was after David had said, you shall eat at the ta my table all the days of your life. And I, I say the same, why did the Lord pay regard to me, a dead dog, a flea, a worm? I don't, you know, I, I, I start to say I don't know why he did pay regard to me, but I do, because Isaiah 43, 7 says that he saved me, he formed me, he made me for his glory, and that God would be glorified. And that's why I'm here to testify today, because I believe the Lord will be glorified through me, testifying to the to great salvation that has been all of the grace of God. And that, you know, I just pray the Lord helps me to make much of Christ, as I mention things from my past and uh, where I'm at now. And so, you know, I grew up in the church um, at around five, six years old. I said the sinner's prayer on my grandmother's step in front, in, inside of her house. I remember where it was at. And I remember years going on after that. My hope of salvation was in that prayer, uh, me accepting Jesus. That was, I would always go back to that. I remember the spot. I'd think about it and I would grab some assurance from there and hope in that. Uh, my hope wasn't in Christ. My solid rock was not Him. I was trusting in a frame that appeared to be sturdy, but it was going to let me down in the end. And so around 12 years old, I started going to the grocery store with my mom before then, but around that time, I started to take notice of the magazines and the checkout aisles. And at 12 years old, I got heavily addicted to pornography. And, you know, for next nine years of my life, I was a slave of it, whether it would be from internet or magazines or wherever it would be, I was living for lust. It was what drove me. It was what satisfied me. And the incredible thing is, no matter how much you get, it will always leave you empty. And one of the greatest, I guess, deceitful things about any sin is the pursuit of the sin. And as you're pursuing the sin, there's exhilaration, there's excitement. But once you gain the sin and you satisfy yourself with the sin, then it just leaves you barren and empty. As I heard once said, sin will take you farther than you ever want to go, uh, keep you longer than you ever want to stay, and cost you more than you ever want to pay. And so around uh, 18 years old, um, well, you know, in middle school, my parents took me out and homeschooled me. Uh, I lied. I didn't do any high school, basically. I played video games 15 hours a day for five, six years of my life. That was all I did. I played games. Um, I had more joy being a video game character and worrying about the, the level ups and the gear that a character had than my real life character. Uh, when I was 18, my parents forced me to get my driver's license. I didn't even want to drive. I wanted to sit at home in that computer playing games all day long. That was my, my god, my idol, and it went hand in hand with internet pornography. Just that computer, you know, I was there literally in my heart bowing down and worshiping that as my God. And you know what? I look back now and I see, man, I was, I was a fool. Uh, I was going to gain that and lose my soul for all of an eternity. Well, around 18 years old, I really hated the sin of pornography. I mean, the shame, the guilt that it caused in my life, it just made me miserable. Uh, I would be on my face crying out to God, saying, God, I'll never do this again. But I kept going right back to it. I was consumed. I was controlled by it. The impulses that came upon me to pursue sin, well, they, they absolutely controlled me. And I really was striving to get free. I remember doing courses. I remember getting internet filters. And at 18 years old, uh, I had a burden to put a testimony up because I was free of pornography maybe 30-something days. And I, I put an a audio testimony up in a video on YouTube. Uh, this is at 18. This is three years before God saved me. Uh, three years before I started Albionist.com. And I remember I put that up and, you know, I started falling back into the sin and I deleted it. I took it down. And I kept trying to pursue freedom from pornography. And here, here's something I want to emphasize is, and it's so huge. My God m was freedom. My God was not Christ. I was pursuing freedom instead of pursuing Christ. The, the reason I was going to go to hell was obviously my sin, but the big idol was freedom. I wanted to be free of pornography, uh, of masturbation so badly. I wanted to get it out of my life. Uh, you know, I remember a relationship I was in. I thought, well, man, if I ever marry this person, how am I going to live uh, with myself being married and still looking at pornography? I thought, I, I don't want to be in a situation like that. So I had all of this worldly grief 
is uh, 2 Corinthians 7.10 says, I had all this worldly grief that was motivating my pursuit of freedom. It was not Christ. I had not seen that cross as precious at all. I was totally deceived. Another place I gained false assurance from was in Romans chapter 7, where Paul says he did the things that he did not want to do. And I remember uh, other people in my life, even youth pastors and people, just they would, give, they, would get, they would give me assurance I was saved because of what Paul said in Romans 7. And I can look back now and realize Paul was talking about when he was a Pharisee. You know, of course Paul wanted to be free of these sins because his perfection was in pursuit of the law. It was a work salvation. And in the end he says, who will deliver me from this body of death? And it's Christ. And as you go into Romans 8.13, you see that by the Spirit we put to death the deeds of the flesh. If we don't, we will die. I remember growing up, I'd read Matthew 5.30 about how if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out, chop off your arm, or you go to hell. And you know what's crazy? Me and all my friends would read that passage and we would think that can't mean what it means because if it does, we're going to hell. But we're Christians. We said the prayer. We believe in Jesus. We go to church. So we would take that text and say, it cannot mean what it means. You know, you take 1 Corinthians 6, 9. It says, don't be deceived. The sexual immoral will not inherit the kingdom of God. And I remember I thought, well, that can't mean what it means because then that means I'm going to hell. That means I'm not inheriting the kingdom of God. And the issue was, I would look at all of my friends, and most of them appeared just like me. And so I thought, well, they're all Christians, I'm a Christian. And I was not looking at this standard, this book, this Bible. And so my plea to you guys out there today is, look at this book, look at this Bible. Does your life add up to this? Have you truly been born again and saved? Have you been regenerated? You know, regeneration in Ezekiel 36, it, it, it says the desolate lands that were once barren as wastelands will now be like the Garden of Eden. And God comes in there and He says that I'm going to take out the heart of stone, give you a heart of flesh, I'm going to give you a new spirit, and I'm going to cause you to walk and obey my statues. And lo and behold, that wasn't a reality in my life. And at 21, I believed myself to be saved. I was lost. And I would be going to a Bible study. I remember going to the Bible study one night and uh, you know I started having an interest in the Word of God and I started to talk to all the guys in the church about we got to get free of pornography and masturbation you know what's this going to take you know we had all the safe eyes we had the internet filters we did the 60-day courses none of it was working well we weren't saved that's why it wasn't working I went home and I remember I walked in the living room and my family sadly was watching there's some TV show deal or no deal and there's supermodels on it and I, I looked for one second and I saw a model and all these thoughts of lust flooded my mind and I went back to my room and sitting in my room I just felt the lust I, I overcome me, the thoughts, I couldn't, I couldn't take them captive. I, I, I look back now and I realize I didn't have the Spirit of God um, in me and you know I was going to open up my browser to view pornography and instead I went and checked my Facebook and someone who had been at Moore that night who I knew my whole life never talked to them they sent me a message saying, James, they just listed all these positive things like it's incredible what God's done in your life and on and on. And I sat there and I realized God had done nothing in my life. It was all a work of James Jennings. I had worked so hard to clean the outside of the cup, yet I had no new heart from God. I wasn't born again. And I can remember that night I cried out to God and He saved me. I mean, I, I finally gave up my works-based salvation. And I remember it's so easy to say I'm saved by faith alone in Christ, yet to be doing a works-based salvation, trying to merit my uh, acceptance before God by my freedom. That's what I was, I mean, I would always talk about freedom from pornography when I was lost because that was my God. And now, <laughs> you know, to have the preciousness of Christ, to know that He became sin for me and, and He suffered the wrath of God. I mean, God slaughtered His only Son on the cross for my sins personally. That's just incredible. It's amazing. I didn't realize I was saved that night. I, I started to have, I had freedom from pornography and masturbation. I was no longer a slave to it. And months later, when I really became to realize the doctrine of regeneration, what it meant to be born again, I realized, whoa, I wasn't saved at six. You know, I get so many people through, I'll be honest, maybe someone 50 years old, and they said, well, I've been saved since I was six, and I've been a slave of pornography for 40 years of my life, and I'm a Christian. 
And I said the same thing. My friend, you're not a Christian. I wasn't a Christian. Romans 6.18 says we have been set free from sin and become slaves of righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says if you're in Christ, you're a new creature. The old it passes away, the new it comes. And you know why? It says in verse 18, all this is from God. And that's what happened that night. The living God, I, I use this analogy, the living God invaded my life. And I had the battleships of the Spirit of God. They pulled up alongside of my little fortress of sin and they unloaded with all full force upon my little fortress and it demolished it. And that was three years ago. And, and God did that radical work. And ever since then, you know what? There are landmines all around me and every step counts. I make a wrong step. You know, just like David, he made a wrong step. He fell into adultery, he fell into murder. Christians do fall. We are not perfect, but I tell you, I am not what I used to be. I am a slave of Christ, and I, it's my greatest joy to serve Him. He's my master. I can't believe it that for 21 years my master was a computer. I mean, that's just stupid. It's incredible. Yet, God had mercy on me. He pays regard to me, a, a dead dog. And the Lord, He disciplines the ones He loves, Hebrews 12 says, and He comes in there with the rod and He will break us of self. He'll break us and show us you can't rely on self. And the root of everything, it's a heart issue. The reason I was going to pornography was I was selfish. And the reason I was using, at a point, I'll be honest, I'll be honest used to be a, a ministry where I would gain my joy from my performance. You see, you can make anything a God. You can make freedom from sexual sin a God. You can make anything a God. And that's what I had done. And so I challenge you guys out there, examine your hearts because everything is a heart issue. It always goes back to the heart. And that's so important to realize because we must pursue the Lord. And as I've heard Brother Bob say, with no strings attached to the world, everything out of the way. And I hope this encourages you guys out there. And it, it blows my mind that God saved me and then allowed me to start out, be honest, and allowed it, you know, not to be a disaster. I was going in too much heresy. I remember when I got saved, I started getting into all this, you know, emergent stuff. And, oh, I thank God. And He was faithful to me to, to bring me back to this book, to lead me away from men and to God. And that's, praise the Lord for that. And the Lord saved me from pursuing freedom instead of Christ. And for 18 years of my life, I was totally hard and told the truth. I just slept in church. And then once I got enlightened that I need freedom, I pursued freedom and not Christ. And if the Son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. But if it's the Son sets you free, it's not your own self. We must give up on our own power. Jeremiah 17, 5 says, Cursed is the man who makes flesh his strength, but blessed is the man whose trust is in the Lord. And I, I trust in the Lord to continue to sanctify me, to break me. I can't believe the, the, the work God has done the last years of breaking me of self. I mean, when I got saved, I, I felt like I had no struggles at all. And the Lord showed me, James, you got heart issue here, issue here, and things that I never thought were sins, the Lord was showing me. And you know, those who endure to the end will be saved. Those who endure in a love relationship with Jesus Christ, and He's so worthy of it, so pursue Him with all your heart, soul, and mind. Do not waste your life. If the Lord could save me, someone who played video games 15 hours a day, a slave of pornography, I was so shy I wouldn't talk to anyone. I would on the internet, I'd talk to people in audio chat, but in person I would put a mask on, I lived a totally false life. If God could save me and then use me to start a website like I'll be honest, use me to do anything at all, I mean that's just the grace of God. And I have no credit for anything that's happened. Everything goes right back to Him. And that's, I just want to encourage you guys, this is your one life. We're never going to live again. This life is going to end in a moment. Tomorrow's not granted. We don't know the hour the Lord's going to come. It's a vapor. It's blowing by so fast. Uh, the waterfall, of the end of your life is coming so soon. And I tell you, be ready for the drop uh, into eternity. I don't fear death at all. I mean, death, you know, where's your sting? <laughs> I have the blood of Christ all over my account. I don't fear death, I fear God, and I need, a, I need a greater fear of the Lord. I do, and I pray that by God's grace none of this is done in the flesh, and that it will edify and encourage, and you know, I'm just a worm and a dead dog, I'm nothing at all. And I don't say that because I know I should, I say it because it's true. So please, 
If you're, listen, if you're dabbling in pornography, if you're still in sexual sin, if you're still falling into masturbation, put those things to death by the Spirit. And if it's not getting put to death, ask yourself, do you have the Spirit? You know, don't, don't, don't take Matthew 5.30 lightly. If, if it causes you to sin, it's going to drag you to hell. Whether that be, and some of you may be free of those things and you got some freedom, but you, your God is the freedom and it's not Christ. And that will send you to hell. What are you boasting in? What am I boasting in? One thing, he who knew no sin became sin for me, that in him I can be made right with God. I, I am presentable before God for one reason, the blood of Christ. It's covered my account in full and he died on behalf of, for me to cleanse me of every lawless deed and to purify for himself a people for, that are going to be zealous for good works. And so I'm trying to do that. Oh, I need the Lord's help. I failed in many ways. But I tell you this, I always go back to him and that's where the hope is found. My eyes are ever towards the Lord. He will pluck my feet out of the net. So praise, praise God. So be encouraged again, and Lord, help us to run. Only one life, as C.T. Studd said, and it'll soon be passed, and only what's done for Christ will last. And some want to be within the mile of a chapel bell. I want to run a rescue ship a yard from hell. And to the Grace House, and I'll be honest, I guess it's my rescue ship for now, and the main thing I need to be rescued from is myself every day. Oh, Lord, Kill me, crucify me, take away all self. Let it all be for Christ and His glory. So let us press on, as Hosea 6.3 says, let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. So, amen.